Hi guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doodle. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm here to give you the quick heads up on a new series that's going to be coming up on my uh, channel. So the series is going to be starting on Monday the 27th of June and it's going to be seven days and it's going to be craft inspiration for when you are missing your mojo. So missing mojo motivation um, and yep it's for you know those times when you just have lost your mojo and you just cannot craft and you know that happens to all of us. We all kind of have those times where we just literally feel you know I don't know what's going on but for some reason I cannot make myself craft. So we're just going to kind of, yeah, just do a few kind of gentle, nice projects and things and, um, you know, hopefully kind of build some inspiration. Um, I'm going to share with you some of my ways that I kind of maybe, um, you know, find inspiration or, you know, that help me if I'm feeling a little bit kind of stagnated in my inspiration, um, you know, for crafting. So I just want to share with you, um, you know, just some of my thoughts on it, really. I saw an amazing video recently from um, Joey DeFee, and she talked about this subject as well, when you're kind of feeling a little bit, you know, a little bit struggle to craft. And it was a really helpful video, and I just thought that I would come along and, you know, just give you my kind of um, thoughts as well. Um, and yeah, just obviously to, you know, hopefully kind of offer some, offer some assistance. Like I say, I mean, we all do have those times where we struggle and, you know, who knows? I, I think sometimes it could be, you know, if we're stressed in other areas, it could be perhaps, you know, we're missing a nutrient in our diet, you know, all those different things kind of all affect it. Um, but you know, there's different things that I would kind of say, you know, I find helpful. And obviously we're going to have the seven days in the trait in the um, series. So, I mean, obviously one of the ways that you can kind of um, inspire yourself is obviously, you know, watch videos, watch tons of videos. Now I have got a massive, massive favorites um, list, you know, tons and tons of videos are in there. They're not all craft videos. I quite like some of the motivational speak, uh, speech type videos and things. So I have those in there as well. Um, but I've got a lot of videos in my favourites. Now, in episode seven, I think it is, I will share a handful of videos that I do, you know, really find very helpful. Um, but, you know, so re-watching sometimes some of those videos that are in your favourites. I know Joey DeFee did actually mention that herself. You know, that can be really, really helpful and just kind of, you know, spur you on when you're slightly kind of struggling to craft. Um, another thing really and this is just, you know, yeah, really kind of important, I think, to keep in mind. Don't stress yourself and don't pressure yourself. You know, if you really are wanting to craft, but you, you know, nothing's coming. The worst thing you can do is kind of then be feeling more frustrated with yourself and, oh, why can't I craft? You know, because actually that's going to kind of stunt your creativity even more. So just remember, you know, this is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be, you know, um inspirate uh not inspirational sorry enjoyable and you know stressing and pressurizing yourself that can you know really make things actually worse another thing that i would kind of say is you know if you're struggling i often find it's easiest then to stick with quite small projects so rather than trying to again pressure yourself into oh you know i'd love to do a massive journal or you know or a regular regular journal um, but, you know, that can be quite a large project, really. So rather than kind of thinking, oh, I'm going, you know, going to make a, a journal here, you know, just pick something quite small. Um, you know, make a tag, make a few tags, make a cluster, make a few clusters, something quite small that doesn't take too much of a commitment time wise, that doesn't take too much of a commitment thoughts wise, all of that kind of stuff. And again, you know, we will look at this during the series and, you know, the projects and things that we're going to do, they're hopefully going to be quite quick, quite easy. Obviously, if you watch my channel, you'll know I never, ever do anything that's complicated because oh, life's complicated enough. Who wants to bog themselves down with complicated crafting? Um, you know, so, yeah, I think quite, you know, quite a good one really is stick with little projects. So, for instance, here I've got some of these little strips, kind of like edge clusters, you know, these are small projects and you know i find things like this quite inspirational to to watch people make things like this and inspirational to make these they don't take up much time they don't take many um 
you know, materials. And, you know, they're not a huge kind of commitment from you. So that's, you know, that's kind of another thing that I would kind of say to bear in mind with. Um, another thing that you may want to bear in mind is picking something that you've perhaps had success with in the past. So, for instance, you know, I know that a limitation for me is tiny things. You know, I do not do very well with tiny things. You know, I'm much better off making larger things. So, you know, why would I pressure myself to make something tiny? I would rather kind of, um, you know, do something that I'm not going to feel stressed, do something that I feel is within my capabilities. So, you know, make something that you've had success with. So for me, that would be, you know, make something bigger. So for instance, tag here, it's not a tiny tag or anything, you know, it's something that I know that I have been able to make in the past it's, you know, it's a sort of realistic size for me to be able to do. It's using papers that I love, images that I love. You know, if I'm struggling to find inspiration to then go out of my comfort zone, as in doing something completely, um, you know, off-piste for me, kind of, i.e. tiny things or perhaps, you know, say bohemian, that's not really a style that I... Um, have ever made or worked with before. So if I then sort of thought, well, I'm going to make a tiny bohemian book, that would possibly be making it harder for me. And again, I'm just telling you kind of my point of view. And, you know, who knows, you maybe would think the opposite and maybe think, well, actually, that challenge would spur me on. Um, you know, obviously, you know you best and, you know, kind of go with how your gut kind of tells you. For me, I think go with something I know that I can do that I've had success with before. Another thing that you could do is organise your stash. So for instance, you know, behind me here, I've got, oops, I'll just put it in here. Oh my goodness. Ooh. I've got here some journal cards and things that I've made. And, you know, I could go through these and I could reorganise them. I could put them kind of in size order and things like that. You know, I could put them in theme order. Just organising my things and, you know, looking through my things, it's possibly going to kind of um, jog my memory, you know, maybe kind of like remind me of things that I have made that I've really loved. Or, you know, just kind of the looking at things and the touching things and things like that, you know, I find can really help. So, you know, organising your stash is another quite good way to perhaps spur your creativity. Um, another thing that I find quite helpful is if you look through some of your old projects. So, I mean, again, it's a bit like organising your stash. So, you know, you could look through some of your old pieces that you have made and sorry, I'm just going to pop this back on my shelf behind me because otherwise I'm ooh, running out of room here on my desk. Ooh. Right. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. I just thought otherwise I was running out of room. So again, look through some of your old projects. They could be just look through some old tags that you've made. If you've got some journals that you have made, flick through your old journals, you know, things that you really love. Or if you've bought journals from other people, look through those. You know, all of those things can help to inspire you. You know, maybe you've made something that contained pocket types and things like that, that you've totally forgotten, you know, even that, that you've made them. And just looking through, it can be a reminder, you know. And again, I can't, um, can't stress enough the importance of the feel of things, you know, the tactile kind of quality of junk journaling. So just feeling those things in your hands and kind of, you know, the tactile nature of junk journals is in, in itself really quite inspirational. So, you know, just flicking through and touching it all and handling it, you know, actually can really spur on your, you know, your creative, um, if well, inner creative soul, I suppose. Um, so that's another kind of thing. Another thing is look through your stash. So, you know, look through some of your old papers and things like that. You know, maybe like me, you know, you maybe have got a whole bunch of, you know, 12 by 12s. Maybe you've got some printables. Maybe you've got, um, you know, I don't know, eight by eight pads or things like that. Have a look through your old stash. Maybe you've got lots of vintage items. Have a look through all those old things 
because again, you know, just looking through those old things, it may just reignite, you know, you'll think, oh, I can remember buying that. I was going to, you know, make this with it or do that with that. And you might have forgotten over time. And so just pulling out and looking through your stash can really help to, you know, just spur on your, you know, your creative kind of juices and get them kind of flowing again. Some little tips that I would say um, for when you're actually kind of making things. And, you know, these are kind of quite small things and probably pretty obvious. But for me, again, things that I just find, you know, very helpful, particularly when I'm, you know, possibly struggling to, you know, to bring things together in a way that I like. So the, one of the things that I would say is using a focal point can really, really, really help. Um, you know, if you're making a tag, for example, I keep on getting my tags out and putting them away. Let me pull that back in. So if you're making a tag, for example, if you have something to use as a focal point, you may well find your tag is going to come together much, much easier than if you didn't. So for instance, this one, I've got this gorgeous, um, you know, sketch here of, um, you know, a building here in the UK. Here I've got obviously a vintage photograph, you know, it's it's a printable of a vintage photograph. Those are my focal points. And of course, without those, those tags would be, um, you know, floundering around. I would be struggling to know what direction to head. Now, I'm not saying that every single time you create something, you need a focal point. Of course you don't. Um, but on those days when you're struggling for inspiration, I think personally, having a focal point is just going to make things a billion times easier. Um, so for me, I can't stress enough the importance of, you know, having a focal point, even if you're making a cluster or anything else, you know, if you've got like a little something, I mean, these, for example, are from my Belgian blue kit. And there's a lot of these little kind of um, frame type pieces with all, you know, birds and people and what have you inside them. And you could cut these out and use loads and loads of these on little paper clips, on tags, you know, on all different things. They are straight away going to give you a direction from which to base your item. Um, you know, the same with this. This is my Rose Park and this is the page that's got the shrunk down ephemera. And so you've got the four smaller photographs there. So again, you could just tear around those. You could, you know, I don't know, punch them with an oval or something like that or just use them in their rectangular shape, straight away, you've got something from which to work with. Um, you know, without the focal point, I personally think, you know, it's much more difficult to actually create something. Um, but again, you know, that's my take and that's my, um, you know, my stance. You may find that you actually are the opposite and, you know, you prefer to kind of create something and then find a focal point. Um, you know, I'm just kind of saying from my point of view, I really like to have a focal point. Another thing that I would really say is use things that you absolutely love. So again, it's fine to use things that you don't really love. You know, that's, that's also fine. But when you're creating things, when you're, you know, when you're struggling already, using things that you really love, you know, for instance, like a rose or something like that, you know, or a stamped image that you love, you know, again, maybe something that you've had success with in the past, that's going to really help you. Picking something, like I said before, that possibly, you know, not your usual leaning or not your usual style, that maybe will be pushing you over the edge and making you struggle actually even more. Um, the next thing which we touched on already is, you know, keeping things simple. Don't overcomplicate things. And, you know, if, if you see a, you know, fantastically complicated project, you know, and that's absolutely fine and that's great. But possibly when you're struggling with your, um, you know, your process in the first place is maybe not the best time to tackle a massive, massive project. Because what can happen is, of course, if it doesn't start coming together straight away, you might frustrate yourself. You might just get cross with yourself why you can't make it. And that might just put you off and diminish your... Um, uh, uh, what is that word? <laughs> Diminish your confidence for future projects. So I can't emphasize enough, keeping it simple, keeping it, you know, quite small, quite simple, 
quite doable, that's going to motivate you to get back in the craft room. If you've had a disaster, it may just put you off. Um, and then the other thing really, and this again sounds, you know, really, really obvious, but you maybe would want to craft to music or something like that. Now, I'm quite a silent, um, you know, silent person. I actually really love silence. So, you know, if I'm not filming, which generally I don't that often craft now when I'm not filming, because of course, you know, I'm uploading a video every day. So there isn't that much time to craft without filming. When I do though, I have to say I generally craft in silence because I love, I love the silence. Having said that, um, <laughs> a couple of times, when I have been struggling for, you know, for motivation or for ideas and things, I have put on, and again, this is personal preference and I'm not in any way suggesting that you definitely would find this inspirational, but the Vivaldi Four Seasons um, piece of music, I have found to be very, very inspirational for me. Again, I emphasise for me because all of these things are what I find works for me. They don't necessarily work for everybody. <coughs> but, you know, you may have a piece of music that you find that works for you. Um, so, you know, that might just kind of help you. Again, like I say, on the whole, I prefer to craft in silence. But just on those days when I'm struggling, I have found that to be quite helpful. Another thing that I would perhaps say is, you know, don't perhaps overwhelm yourself with like tons and tons and tons of supplies. So, you know, there's things like five, five items challenges and things like that that you could join in or perhaps get your kids or your husband or, you know, your friend, you know, go and pick me five items to use. So you're quite limited or just pick yourself five items or something or, you know, just just restrain yourself to I'm only going to use things from this kit or from this um, scrap bit paper or something like that. Sometimes I think so much choice can be, you know, a bit overwhelming and kind of too much choice, really. Um, again, that's just something that I have found and I'm not necessarily saying that that's, you know, that's a one size fits all type rule. But I'm just sharing things that, you know, I find kind of helpful. And then probably the final thing um, that I would really say is go with the flow. Just allow your creativity to go where it takes you. Don't have a fixed plan. Don't have a, you know, kind of um, concrete goal in mind, you know, because that may lead to you be disappoint being disappointed if actually you know, it doesn't come together or it doesn't go as you had hoped. Just let your art supplies or your, you know, your papers or your fabrics or your, I don't know, book pages, just let them lead you. So be kind of like pulled by the heart where they lead you. Because of course, you know, if you use one set of papers, you might not naturally be drawn to doing the same project as if you used a different set of papers. You know, sometimes you can look at things and you think, oh, I'd love to create a folio with that. Oh, that would be great for making a card. That would be great for making some tags. Um, you know, so just go with what your kind of instincts tell you at the time. Don't be disappointed with yourself. Don't kind of give yourself a hard time. And just enjoy the process. Just literally step into your craft room you know, allow yourself the time, allow yourself the freedom. You know, nobody's going to be coming, you know, coming and judging you. It's just about having fun. It's about enjoying the process. Um, and the last thing that you want to do is kind of like judge yourself so harshly that you put yourself off from going in there again. You know, just get your craft supplies out and just give yourself the easiest time and the, you know, the nicest experience that you possibly can. So that is just about everything I think that I've covered um, for that very lengthy trailer there. So, yep, that being said, um, as I say, we've got seven days of projects and seven days of craft inspiration for Missing Mojo Motivation, which hopefully will, you know, provide lots of ideas and lots of, you know, crafty, crafty yumminess and yeah, ideas and inspiration for you guys. So, as I say, it's starting on Monday, the 27th of June. It's running for seven days. It won't be on the day when there is a mass making. So, on the Tuesdays, obviously, when we have our normal mass making sessions, there will not be one of the episodes. But 
you know, aside from that, there will be um, seven days of the, you know, um, missing, moto mo missing mojo motivation. And yeah, I really hope that you'll all join me. I hope we're all going to have a really lovely time. And, you know, if you are missing a bit of your crafty mojo at the moment, hopefully it's going to really spur you on. So thank you so much for watching and hope to see you on the 27th. Thank you so much then. Bye.